Hi there. In the previous lectures, we've seen that things get simpler when we work with an orthogonal basis. Recall, for instance, that you can find the projection of any factor y onto the subspace spanned by the orthogonal basis u1 up to uk with this formula. The questions I will tackle today are First, does an orthogonal basis exist for any subspace H in Rn? And if so, second, how can we find such a basis for a given subspace? So let's tackle these questions. Don't worry, you don't need protective wear. The answer to both questions is a big yes, of course. The general construction starts from any basis B1 up to Bk of some subspace in Rn. Along the way, I will illustrate what I'm doing with the example of the subspace H on the slide. The vectors B1, B2, B3 are independent, so the dimension of H is 3. Let's start with the general problem. We will generate an orthogonal basis U1 up to Uk in k steps. At each step, we will build a new vector such that the first i u vectors have the same span as the first i b vectors and, moreover, the u vectors are orthogonal. The first step for u1, simply take b1. Next, for u2, take b2 minus the projection of b2 onto the span of b1. Here we use the projection formula for the first time, and in this step, it is irrelevant whether we use B1 or U1. A picture sheds some light on it as well. For the example, U2 becomes the vector you see on the slide, which obviously lies in the span of B1 and B2, and is indeed orthogonal to U1, since the other product of U1 and U2 equals zero. The third step is the crucial step. Again, the new orthogonal vector, u3, is the difference of the third basis vector, b3, minus its projection onto the span of its predecessors. To calculate this projection, the ingenious trick is to use the already found orthogonal basis, u1, u2, since for this basis we may use the ready-made projection formula. The idea is attributed to the two mathematicians, Graham and Schmidt, the whole construction I'm describing here is called the Gram-Schmidt process. Again, a picture may help to see how it works. From this on, all further steps are equivalent to the third step. Every time the new next vector, ui plus 1, equals bi plus 1 minus its projection onto the subspace generated by b1 up to bi, its predecessors and this projection is calculated using the already constructed orthogonal set u1 up to ui. After k steps, this results in orthogonal basis u1 up to uk. Problem solved. Hooray, hooray! G-R-A-M-G-R-A-M-S-C-H-M-I-D-T Let's finish the numerical example. Subtract from b3 the projection of B3 onto span B1, B2, and to find this projection, use the orthogonal basis U1, U2. This gives U3. Since the subspace we consider in this example has dimension k equals 3, we are done. The three vectors U1, U2, U3 give an orthogonal basis. I already checked the orthogonality of U1 and U2. The other two inner products are quickly seen to be zero as well. OK. In the example, as well as in the general construction, the given vectors b1 up to bk were independent. What would happen if a subspace H is the span of vectors bi, but the bi are not independent? Of course, there's much more to say, but I'll leave it at this. Time flies. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.